Hello filmmakers, it is Kerry with Filmmaker Central, and we have ourselves a Mac Mini M1 8 gig, because it's the only one that you can walk into a store, wait in line outside, and go to a counter and pick up. There's no walking into our Apple store here, um, just a checkout counter. So we've got a Mac Mini M1 8 gig, and what we're gonna do today is go through the Fusion templates so you can do the exact same thing at home and compare the performance of the Mac Mini M1 8 gig to your system and see how it does. Instead of just trying to make stuff up that you could never really replicate, we're gonna do just Fusion templates that are built in so you can compare the performance. So let's do that when we come right back. All right, we're going to launch the DaVinci Resolve 17.1 Beta 2. <laughs> so that's what we have. That's the one that's native for the M1 chip. So let's get to it. All right, I've got DaVinci Resolve up and running here. I'm going to go to the edit screen. I'm going to open up my effects library to effects, and I'm just going to drop a Fusion composite on here, and we'll go to the Fusion tab. Now, under the Fusion tab, we have a handful of templates in here. And some of these are pretty cool. There's particles, shaders, styled text, tools, all kinds of cool stuff. And what we want to do is push this machine to see what it can do. So let's go right into, uh, well, you guys want to see particles. So let's just jump right in to particles. And again, you can do this on your machine. You're going to have all these same templates in there. And I'm just going to drop that guy in there. And you can see here it pops in this whole kind of pre-done node tree. We have a P emitter because a lot of people have asked about using P emitter because that is one of the things that will destroy a machine. And we're just going to take this render 3D node and take it to our media out so we can see it and we'll give it a play. And you can see there, it is playing just beautifully on here. Okay, so little, little proof here of what we got going. I'm gonna go about this Mac. You can see it's a Mac Mini M1, eight gigs of RAM. So I'm, this is exactly what I'm, I'm dealing with here. And I'll go to DaVinci Resolve and go to my preferences, go to my media and CPU. I've got Resolve set to 6 gig and Fusion to 2 gig. These are the defaults. So since they're the defaults, I'm going to keep them. So again, no caching, just real-time playback. All right, we'll whack that. And we'll go to, uh, let's try Bubbles. And we'll take that over to the media out and go to the beginning and hit play. All right, now we're starting to see a little stuttering as we get more and more particles on the screen. It's still not bad, totally livable, way faster than this was on my iMac or my MacBook Pro. So, not too shabby there, and you can see there's a lot of stuff in here. Background, ellipses, P emitters, P spawns, uh, flocks, this is really a, a pretty, pretty heinous little example. All right, let's go to our burning engine. If I can find where my uh, media out is on here. All right, and we'll go from our render. Make sure I'm in the right place here. And I think we go from the soft glow to the media out. And we'll go to the beginning. And again, not bad, not super fast, not 
what I would say real time, but definitely not bad at all. So, so far so good. Let's keep going. Select everything. Well, don't want to lose my media out. All right. Uh, how about fireworks? We'll try fireworks here. Let's see if I can scrunch this stuff up here so we can see everything. And I'll drop that on my media out. And we have a kind of a whole lot of nothing going on here. Not quite sure what's going on here. This one is not moving at all. And I didn't think fireworks was going to be that crazy. Let's go ahead and stop it and we'll head over to our edit page and we'll just let that render again i'm doing this all in real time i'm not speeding anything up there we go Okay, not really sure what happened there, but all right. Now again, we're running beta software. So the fact that it didn't work the first time and I had to like leave Fusion and come back, not a big surprise. Okay, we'll dump those and how about a sport portal spawn point? And we'll take that to our media out. Go to the beginning, play that. Really nice. Now, again, as we see more particles, we are getting a little bit of a slowdown. So, but here's the second time through and it's not caching anything. There's not enough RAM to cache, but we're getting some really nice real-time playback. Okay, Smokestack. This is one that is gonna puke things pretty good. This also uses the P emitter and it's going to create some realistic smoke. And I definitely think that this one may start off okay, but I definitely think this one is going to end up uh, slowing way down. Yep, there it goes, slowing down. But still, not bad. Not bad at all. I am totally okay with that. I mean, it's still way faster than my iMac or my MacBook Pro was. So while it's it's definitely not as fast as I would like, you know, it is still a huge improvement over what I had. So there you have it. That's the Mac Mini M1 8 gig plain fusion. And you can do all of these same same things, even on 16. Uh, I don't know if they were all in 15, I think they were, but if you have a current version of Fusion, try it, try it for yourself, compare these things to what I just showed. Again, nothing was sped up, nothing was cheated here. You saw that it's an eight gig machine and it's running super, super nice. Again, not perfect in Fusion. Fusion is very, very processor intensive. It's very memory intensive. But to be able to get that level of playback on a machine that's $699 is freaking unreal. So I don't know what else to tell you. It's pretty freaking awesome. Now, I'm going to go and do something that I basically have never been able to do real time. And I'm going to show you that. So while all these other things you can do yourself, I'm going to use some footage that I have and we're gonna try something. 
So I'm going to delete that and I'll come over to my media pool or my media tab. I'll go to my drive here and I'll open up some stuff here. I'll pull in this footage from Moab. Now, if you're not familiar, I do have another YouTube channel called Trail Traveler where I do off-road videos and I have a lot of fun with that. And that's, I'm trying to, there we go. This should be, this should be a fun little clip here. Now, let's take a look at this footage. This is H265, 30 frames per second, 4K footage. This is from an Autel Evo 2 Pro. So it's 10 bit color log <laughs> H265. This will bring most machines to their knees. And we have complete real time playback. In freaking credible. Now, that's all well and good, but let's have some fun with it. So I'm going to close my effects library, bring these things over here, click on media one, shift space, go to tracker. And this is gonna bring up a couple tracking things here. I'm just gonna select my tires and I'll bring up a second tracker and I'll grab another tire here and I'll adjust the window. I'm at the beginning there. Let's see. Well, it's going to lose it, but let's, I mean, it's that perspective is going to get pretty wonky there. But I'll just, I'll just kind of go to there. All right, I'm going to go to the beginning. We're going to set our adaptive mode on, uh, let's go best match. And we're going to play to, to the end. Now this is going to track those tires and give me uh, some tracking data. Now again, we see some slowdown here. This is not running in real time, but, and I'll say it again, much faster than my MacBook Pro, which would have taken easily probably 30 minutes to track this. My iMac that I had, which was a 2014 with 32 gigs of RAM with a Radeon card, it would have been faster than my MacBook, but still it, it would have taken a significant amount of time to do it. So we're getting probably three or four frames per second here. So definitely not bad. And we'll let that finish. All right. It did 4.28 frames per second. Pretty respectable for a low end machine. All right, we've got our tracker node here. I'm gonna bring up a new node, a text plus mode. And this trail is called Hell's Revenge. And I'll connect that to the tracker. Now we have to go oh, select the tracker. Again, this is not a tutorial on how to use Fusion. That's why I'm kind of running through this, but just to, to show you the kind of the differences that, that you can expect. So on my operation, I'm gonna do a match move. That's gonna give me my position. And I can find, I can find my handles here. Now oh, I select the text. I'll bring that up, zoom back out. We'll kind of rotate it to match the Jeep there. And we're gonna play that. And it's playing back in real time. <laughs> Just wow, okay? Literally freaking wow. All right, let's finish it up here. So we're on the edit page. Again, it's not even rendered and it's playing back or it's not cached. 
and it's playing back in real time. Let's go to the color tab. And I don't have the, I just got this machine set up a few minutes ago, so I don't have my LUTs, but I'll just give this a quick grade, a little color boost. We'll bump the contrast up a little bit, some mid-tone detail. Uh, looking at my waveforms here, I'll bring my, my low of my lifts down a little bit, really give it a nice pop. Now, if you're familiar with DaVinci Resolve, you know, or at least for me, on my machines that I had, I really couldn't get real-time playback ever on the color page. It just would choke my machines. We have real-time playback on the color page with fusion effects, with color grading. And it's not even fully cached. So this is just, I mean, it's, it's really, it's really freaking cool. I gotta say, we'll go back to our edit page. And again, in real time, I'll let it render. Shouldn't take very long at all to uh, pop this thing out. I don't even have to speed this up. I can just kind of talk over this a little bit and I'll let that finish for no good reason because it was already playing back in real time. Go to the beginning, hit play. There we have it. We have motion tracked text on color graded H265 D log 10 bit color footage running on an eight gig machine. I mean, this, this is nuts. Okay. I mean, seriously, this is nuts. Now, uh, I've been watching Learn Color Grading, uh, his channel. He's done a bunch of tests with the same Mac Mini 8 gig, and his stuff blew me away that I had to run out and get one of these and do the things that I do for real and, and really see what this machine is capable of doing. Now, I would have got a 16 gig, but you can't get them. You have to order them. It's gonna take a month to get one. So I just went, I'm just gonna get this. I'll get the 8K or the 8 gig. We'll try it out. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I think what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna get the MacBook Pro with 16 gigs. And then I have a complete portable editing station that is just going to destroy my other machines to the point of I'm already doing the trade-in on my iMac and I'm gonna do the trade-in on my MacBook Pro and just have one MacBook Pro that I can do this level of color grading and fusion effects for under two grand. Just blows me away. So thanks for watching everybody. This has been Kerry with Filmmaker Central. Hope you enjoyed this. If you wanna see some other specific tests with the Mac Mini M1, leave a comment below and I will do my best to get to it. I'm definitely gonna run some other tests. I'm gonna throw some LUTs on here and do the things that I normally do and just get a good feel for how good this machine is because right now it's blowing me away. So thanks for watching everybody. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.